Good morning, everyone. Here we are, the last day of PAX, where Phil Collins is it out. Look at Z Groove in here. You know where the word is, right? You just, you just say the word. Choo Choo Studio. Well, Phil is the man, and we're ready for a party today. Pax Unplugged, last day, here we go. Eric. Uh, yes, hello. Do you know the word? Is it the bird? Everybody's heard, the bird is the word. But what's the word? Just say the word. Su, su, studio. So I'm here at the Catan booth, and as you can see, Catan VR is coming out here, and I think you could see the whole map through this. I, I have to put these goggles on to see what it's like, but this looks like a really cool experience. So I'm gonna put on these glasses, I just got my instructions, and actually I see, wait, oh, there I go. Experiment 7, Asmode Digital, Catan Studios, presents by Oculus, and there is now a chair here and a table. Holy cow, the table is like on the floor. There is the world of Catan. I see the Catan sun. I see, wow, this is an amazing room. I feel like I'm gonna fall here, but there's a piece on the board. I see I see some settlements. Wow, this is this is incredible. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. I can't <laughs> wait to play this version of the game and find out how it goes. Well, I just talked with Mike Selinger. Um, it's not that small. As you know, he's going to be releasing Thornwatch. And for those of you who didn't know, the guys from Penny Arcade, Mike Krahulik, Jerry Holkins, were actually designers for this. So it's kind of their first game, and it's kind of a tandem effort with Lone Shark. And it's going to be very interesting seeing the reaction on Thornwatch, especially because of the artwork, because Mike told me that... Mike Selinger told me that Mike Krahulik did all the artwork for the game, too. So you're going to get that cool Penny Arcade artwork as well in this. Um, you'll see more in my interview. Well, I'm back in the Reading Market, and I've heard about this grilled cheese at Valley Sheeple, and I'm very excited for the sandwich, so we're gonna see how it is. I'm very excited for my grilled cheese, Valley Sheeple here. These grilled cheese sandwiches look insane here. Look at all the stuff they're putting in it. Very excited for this. This is this is going to be amazing. Well, after spending three days coming to the market every day, the Reading Terminal Market, I have to say, this is incredible. The food's incredible. The place is incredible. It's like you just want to um, be enjoying everything. And I love like fresh homemade food, stuff like this. I always loved the North Market, as you know from origins but I think this one is even better Philadelphia you guys did it right this market is incredible Wow look at this thing I know that everyone's been hyping it up I can't wait to take a bite of this sandwich Wow this grilled cheese looks incredible look how cheesy it is I can't even break it apart but that cheese is just coming out look how amazing this sandwich looks yum Yum, yum, yum. It's about to go in my mouth. And here we go. I swear, if you drip that on the table, I'm going to nail you to the floor. I didn't drip it. Don't worry. It's down to the floor anyway. It's all good. Just, just the general principle. No drippage, but... Somebody from New York. Wow. This sandwich is incredible. Well, that was one of the most amazing grilled cheese sandwiches I've ever had. And I know Sam's giving me the evil eye, but I didn't drop any on the table. So this table that was already sold, this Oscar table, is still going clean to, to the person he who bought it. that stuff, man. But it's like I, you haven't eaten in a week. You know what's funny? I told Sam if I did happen to spill something, then we could have said the Oscar table spilled on by the dice tower. 
Would that make it more valuable, less valuable? You don't just go around messing up stuff and saying, ooh, but it's okay because I did it. Maybe it's okay because I did it. I don't know. No, Luckily, not. I didn't though. So everything's good. Look who I found who came over, our co-host. One of our co-hosts for the Dice Tower podcast. Jump in here, Mandy. Hello. Mandy's here. Hi. And you've been working at the Renegade booth all week, haven't you? Yeah, so that's something planned before I came on to Dice Tower and Renegade. They're an awesome company to work for, so I couldn't say no. Renegade's awesome, so we're not, no one's saying anything. Renegade's awesome. No, they are awesome. That's what I'm saying. What games have you been teaching? Um, High Town and High Town. <laughs> High Town, which is new and amazing. Um, have you played Sunday Split? Of course, I actually did a panel, as you know, Mandy Hutchinson from the Dice Tower, and Sunday Split was on the menu. <laughs> Sunday Split is like one of my favorite I Split You Choose games. It's great, it's quick. Because you flipped some of the cards upside down, so right. there's hidden information, which is really cool. Yeah. But you can make it look like it's bad stuff, but it can be amazing stuff, and take it for yourself. I know. So I've been hearing this thing that when you demo games, you lose your voice. Yes. Tell us about this. So uh, we were very close to that today, so I had lots of tea with Honey, and it seemed to work, but we're definitely getting to that point. <laughs> yes. And what's up next for you? Next? Oh my goodness. It's, well, Dice Tower stuff. Oh, it's a cruise. Yes. Oh my yes. Totally yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a little bit relaxing with lots of games with all of you. I'm, I'm trying to convince someone to bring too many boats. Uh, I think we, we, Tom's there. Tom, we're bringing too many bones now, right? Just for Mandy on the cruise? And Suzanne. No. What? Unbelievable. Five people have requested. By the way, Jason, there is an inordinate amount of crumbs all over uh, this table. Uh, uh, I'm in with Mandy right and Suzanne. Right where you were straight. eating. <laughs> I'm what is happening here? I don't know. We're crumbs, having crazy Jason. times on the last day here. <laughs> have packs unplugged. But... It's been a blast, and yes, you'll see Mandy here on the Lean cruise. I think Tom's getting week. punchy back there. He always gets punchy, you know this. Amazing. <laughs> but but um, it's always good to see you, Mandy. Nice to see everyone. Yes, nice and see your crumbs, Jason. <laughs> Do you see my crumbs too? It's right, a little bit right there. Just right there. It wasn't on my face; it was on the table. What? I my face is nice and clean. It's the table. Right. Well, I'm walking back to the Mega Game Room because supposedly there's an escape room that Mega Games is doing. They they did the thing at, at Dice Tower Con last year, or this year, um, the Mega Game. And Eric and Tom did it, if you remember from my blog there. Now, they have some escape room thing. And me and Eric, I don't know who else is going to be in it, but me and Eric and I don't know who else... <laughs> We're about to do this thing, and it sounds like it's going to be fun, so I'm very excited. Let's see if we can escape whatever this is. When I find the room, right here, Mega Game Schedule, room 205B, let me see what's going on, and yay! Well, I found the gang, and it looks like it's not just Eric, it's Sam, Eric, Hello. and Derek. And we are going to win, aren't we? We're going to try. Uh, I think you're going to win. You're just going to go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. We need deep in thought right now. Are we getting well, we while we're escaped Expedition Yellow. Um, and escape that's why yellow. Yeah, escape is, is yeah. It's so we, this, we solved the puzzle. This one was cool. It was like a theatrical experience, right, guys? Why yeah. are you hiding, Eric? I, 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 don't, I don't like being on video. Uh, I, I, yeah, it was, they had a large room with lots of small little vignettes, and they would raise and lower the lights so that it would create a, create a scene. Right. They didn't have to worry about rooms and walls and right. stuff. We'd walk over to a bunch of props or a table, and yeah. uh, it, it, it was With very neat. Or there was an actor, yeah. there was a guide that sort of kept us on track. Right. It was um, very cool. It was a very cool experience. It was different than a normal escape room because it was, it, was, it was more like a theory escape room. It was really cool. I wonder if that person that follows us around is actually going to be in the real thing. And this was just like in a like a trailer almost, maybe to give you an idea of what their real escape room is going to be. But once right. you get to the real escape room, you lose the guide. 
maybe you have to figure all that out. No, I but like the, the guide. I think the guide was there to prevent us from getting stuck. Yeah, I um, like the guide. The guide was cool. Because that can happen if you totally miss a thread in an escape room right. and you just can't. You're not thinking along the lines you need to. Yeah, this kept the story moving because if we miss something, right? I think she was a little quick to guide us very quickly. Like, she didn't let us get stuck at all. True. The second we did anything wrong, right. I think maybe what you're looking for is this, but that may be just because it was a 30 minute experience. Yeah. Right? That's what I mean, that's what I mean. But it was, it was really cool, really different. Oh, as far as our outcome is concerned, I think um, seafood's off the menu. Yeah, we crushed it. Yeah. Totally. And many Literally. things. We crushed many things. Many, many things. Many things. Man. Man. I gotta say, I, I was really impressed with the imagination of, I mean, I, I peeked in the corner, there's a dude running everything from an iPad. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so fun. It was pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very, experience. very, very electronic, very cool. Check it out. Check Expedition it. Yellow. Cool beans. It was all yellow. Well, guess where I'm going now. I promised you guys this. For three straight days, we're going to Independence Hall and Liberty Bell. I have a tour guide with me. He made me promise to come. I couldn't say no. <laughs> the good thing is, maybe I, Eric can Eric can be the one who narrates it. I'll get the cool narration, as cool as like the One Night Werewolf app. As Jason walked down the street, he was thinking, where am I going? I should have checked Google Maps before I left. I hope we don't get lost. I really want to get there. Well, here we are at the Independence Visitor Center. You can see Independence Hall in the background there. It's gonna be very exciting when we get up there. I mean, that's where the Constitution was signed. It's a pretty historic part of our country and it's, you know, it gives you shivers when you're here and seeing it. Well, here we are, Independence Hall. This is, you know, this is the place we have a little disappointment to tell you. Um, I think I'll tell you, or maybe Eric will tell you. It turns out we didn't get here early enough. They gave away all the passes. It to turns go out into Independence Hall. We can still see the bell, but I don't think they're going to let Jason video it or talk. I'm sorry. I I don't know, but we really wanted to go inside and show you like where they were when they signed it. I think we're going to have to do that next year. But at least we have the outside view here. So let me give you more of that. Well, here we are. I'm going to flip the camera around and you're going to see it in all its glory. There's the Liberty Bell. And here's the famous crack. So as you can see, the famous crack in the Liberty Bell right there. It's uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> so you can see the Liberty Bell right there. Behind us, what do you think? It's impressive, Eric. It's, 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 it's a very heavy bell. It's about 2,000 pounds. It's a big bell. I know, but just to see like Independence Hall and everything right behind yeah. it. I, I really like that this building displays the bell and then it has Independence Hall and like a big glass wall. You can see where it used to hang. It's really well designed, really neat. Yeah, so that's your history lesson for today. Plus, and they played the Liberty Bell March, the John Philip Sousa tune that, that was then the Monty Python theme song. That's in the museum too. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, which was really cool. So now I think we're going to head back to the convention and see what else is going on. Only a little bit left. I know. Well, here we are. We are at Catan VR. This is the actual program. You can see Eric is getting a lesson on how to use it at the moment. See how there's a sensor both here or trigger here or here. sensor. If you move these together, push them together like you're actually grabbing something. Okay. So we're very excited to see this. And we'll give you an idea of how much more like it. And if I say point to something, keep pushing that down. Just put your finger out. And there you go. Now you can actually see the sensor. Okay. Now you can 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 see the sensor. Okay. This guy. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah <very nice. laughs> hey, do, do that again, Eric, so, so I can get both angles of this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who has two thumbs and loves VR? This guy. <laughs> oh, how awesome is this? That's story. very neat. <laughs>
Okay, so let's get this started. Do you want to drive or shall I? Oh, take your pick. Okay. Um, Characters from uh, all of the various, uh, uh, you know, they're in the manual, you know, they have different personalities in Catan lore, so they all play differently. And notice how they're color-coded for your convenience. So, like, Marianne is blue, Nasir is white, uh, or Nasir is red, Kanamir is white. You are therefore orange, um, which you will see if you look in your bottom right, see the little orange. But you'll also notice that if you, because we're trying to replicate real life, notice if you look at Marianne, you can see her cards and see like the little, it isn't working yet, but above her head you see the numbers. That would be her victory points, her development cards. So just like in real life, how you'd look at a player to see what they have, Mm -hmm. you look at, we're trying not to put interface anywhere except for kind of the natural places. Well, you just saw Eric playing. I shot 20 minutes because we're going to turn this into another video. I have a feeling, but Eric, what did you think? That is pretty cool. You really feel like you're in a room you're, you're, you're in this hall playing the game. You can look around and see all the scenery. It's very immersive. It's the most smooth, immersive VR experience I've had. Very cool. And now I'm going to try, and I think I'm going to think it's awesome. Well, you guys know this already, so we'll see. Well, here we go. About to put on the, the Oculus, and we'll see what happens. I think he's going to go to a whole new world. I think he'll it's be, going to be transported a, oh, in a mystic oh, realm of pure wow. imagination. So There's here. the board down there. Put out your left hand. Okay. Hold on, slip it in there. You go. Put oh, out your right hand. Oh, this is so smooth. Look at my finger going. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the, kind of the center chair in front of you, uh, uh, up to the up there, you go. Hit that and hit the top left button, your Y button. This your, one? Nope, on the, your controller. We're going to recenter your camera. Okay, which button? Um, here, let's see. This, or actually here, look look up to your right at the middle, down right, look at the chair. This uh, chair. Uh, that chair, there we that go. That chair. Uh, and here we go. Now you're oh, actually wow. sitting in the chair. Yes, I am. So you're pointed a little bit more in the direction yeah. that you're actually pointed. Yes, I am. Wow. So actually, if we want... <laughs> there is like... Okay, I'm looking down at this board, and it is 3D, and it is just incredible. There's a bird here. Look at this bird that I'm touching. <laughs> See that mountain up to your left? Check out the fog in the mountain. On the left. Uh, the number, number three. three. Number three. Yep. Oh. That fog rolls in and out uh, and just kind of. And I saw there was a tornado here. A dust yep, devil. yep. Yeah, the the little dust devil in the desert. And the sheep are moving. Look yeah. at these little sheep over here. Oh, wow. The trees is, kind of sway back and forth. This is. This is immersive, like truly immersive. So speaking of immersive, look out to your right. So. Oh, I could just stare at the skyline forever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is the box. That is the box cover yeah. in real virtual. Eric, pan it, pan it, if you have it, pan over at the, uh, computer? At the computer screen. Look at what I'm looking at. Uh, oh, if, you, if you keep looking at it for a while, you'll you'll notice that the the mist actually uh, clouds past the city, yeah. and uh, once in a while, the bird that's on the box will fly, fly by. Uh, oh wow! Actually, I want to see something neat too, because you know the camera's on your face. So if you actually stand up, you know, I'm just put my hand on your shoulder so you don't bump anything. Now look to your right, and you'll actually see a higher view because you're not oh, higher up. Oh yes! Now I see. The wheat fields. Yep. Yep. In in fact, uh, this has all of the Catan uh, resources represented in it. Mm-hmm. Yes, the mountains are back there. Yep. All the way back there. And forest. Down there's there. a, there's a city and the forest and yeah, oh the forest over there and the yep. hills and the wheat. If you were slightly taller, you could see the sheep. Mm-hmm. Um, I sort of see the sheep. I don't want you to I walk into the pasture. wall. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. I'm gonna put my hands as you sit back down, just since it's VR. I'm gonna look back at the yourself. board. Yep. So you want to web series? That is amazing. The music, everything. It's like it's immersive. It's the most immersive experience I've seen in a in a VR system yet. This is incredible. We're gonna talk with the guys who designed this right now. Guys, you'll see the interview, and that'll be on a whole separate thing. But you'll see the interview from here at Pax Unplugged. Well, we just got done with the Catan VR. We're crossing the street, so I'll catch up to Eric when I get to the other side. I walk quickly. He Keep does up, walk Jason. quickly. Um, so what did you think of that, Eric? Was that like the that most was, awesome thing? Well, it, it was very cool. Um, I mean, the, the real key is, do enough people have the equipment necessary to run this thing? Uh, and, and, you know, is, is the market there to do it? If you have that market, 
I, I am more convinced than I was before this meeting. Because I, I was thinking, oh, you, you are shrunk down to the size of a Catanian, and you, you waltz around and you plant your fields and you, you, you make your roads and stuff. But no, this is supposed to simulate the experience of playing with your friends over large distances in an immersive experience. So you're all in this room and you're getting reactions from the other players and trading with them and it's, it feels like you're sitting down at a table to play the game. It, they do that really well, it's pretty neat. It's amazingly neat. I thought it was awesome. I, I felt like I was in my throne, <laughs> looking out at the sky of Catan with the sun rising. You just want to be on a throne. I do want to be on a throne. Those thrones were cool though. And uh, yeah, you really feel like you're there playing a game. Like. I felt like I was playing the game. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's very smooth. It's very cool. Um, the, the response of looking around, they've, they've rendered this room incredibly well. It's got scenery. It re responds to whether you're standing or sitting. Yeah, I'm glad we went. It's cool. <laughs> or as I'd say, it is awesome. Some might say that. Well, we're cleaning out the booth. Packs just ended. As you can see, Sam is taping up the boxes as we speak. I'm waiting for the, the normal comment of Jason's not doing anything. Jason's You're not, not doing, doing anything. Well. You, just, you just made it, so ah! we don't have to. And where's our fearless leader over here? How did you think the convention went? Except for the part where Jason's not doing anything at the end. Good. <laughs> no, in, in all honesty though, Tom, what, tell, tell me your opinions on the first pack some plug. It's a really great con. Really enjoying it. Having a, we'll be back next year. Well, you heard what Tom's opinion was. I have to say, PAX Unplugged was just incredible. The hosts were incredible. The guys from Penny Arcade were incredible. The enforcers have been nothing but amazing. I mean, I've never felt so safe in a booth. Like, I feel like I could leave my phone and the enforcer would be like, oh, you forgot your phone. The, the whole staff here has been incredible. This has been one of the most amazing conventions that I've been to. I just want to say, PAX Unplugged is awesome. Yeah, you're awesome, Pax Unplugged. Keep it up. Yeah. I'm out. I've got a lot of people buy these and they... And I'm out too for now. Brother, so hurry up. Well, we're wrapping up this video. It was an amazing Pax, amazing time. Hope you guys enjoyed this blog, vlog, whatever I'm going to call it. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed the coverage. I'll be back with more coverage from Dice Tower Cruise coming up soon. And uh, for now, this is Jason Levine from the Dice Tower. No, that is Tom Vassal from the Dice Tower. And it is Tom Vassal from the Dice Tower. And now Jason Lee from the Dice Tower signing out from PAX Unplugged. Well.